Hi friends, I'm Kelsey. Thank you for stopping by my channel today. Gosh, I can't believe it's already October. I feel like September flew. Like I was waiting for fall because I don't really like to be hot. So I was really excited when it finally became fall. And then like this month just went so fast. And in Iowa, where I'm from, like it's been very hot. And then just in the past week, cause it started to feel like true fall. And so, man, the sun is really bright right now. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> The sun was really bright. So yeah, it only just started to feel like fall in probably the past week. And so I'm just in a mood now. I'm ready for cozy reading. My brain has made like that switch. September was an awesome reading month for me. So I'm just going to wrap up what I've read. I'm just excited because now that it's going to be October, now I'm really going to embrace like the witchy spooky vibes but September was kind of like a good transition month because I was kind of like going from like summer reading to fall reading it was just a really great transition month so I'm gonna go through some of the books that I have read this month I don't have a lot of books physically because a lot of them are library books or audiobooks or ebooks so you'll just get the little screen grab over here of whatever book it is for the most part to get started the very first book I started was the Saga series and my friend Ashley um, on Instagram, she's a bookish limb in life. She recommended this to me and I read four volumes. I have two more out from the library. They're like kind of read in one sitting. So this is volume, these are volumes two and three. I read volumes one through four and they're not very thick, but like seriously, you can read them in one sitting. It's about a couple who are from different planets and these planets are at war with each other and they're like different species they fall in love and they have a baby and that's like against the world order like that's totally against what is appropriate in this world both countries are at war but they're also trying to prevent these two from like being together and want them captured so it follows the couple it's told from the perspective of their child which is really funny because her like tone is so clever and then it also goes through like the people chasing her, chasing them, um, kind of through the politics and the leadership. I don't really feel like there's any spoilers on this, but like the art is beautiful. It's kind of giving me like Guardians of the Galaxy mixed with Star Wars, mixed with like Watchmen. Like it is a very graphic series, very graphic novel. There's a lot of sex on the page, a lot of swearing. So know that going into it, but there's I think 10 or 12 volumes out. And they're starting publishing again. I think they like took a hiatus. So I'm excited because I have a feeling I'll get really caught up with them. And I'm hooked. If you're looking for a good graphic novel series to start, I definitely recommend this. Okay, so the next two books I read were for the Upside Down Readathon. And I read Book of Night and I read Behind Her Eyes. You can watch my Upside Down vlog with my thoughts on that. I gave Book of Night like three stars. So I just didn't really like like the feel of the book, but I thought the world building was okay. It needed a little more explanation for me. And I talk about that in the Upside Down blog. I loved but hated Behind Her Eyes. And I also talk about that on the vlog. Um, I still just don't know how I feel about it. I think I'm still, I gave it four stars because it did what I wanted it to do, but I still don't know if I loved or hated it. And I think that that is a testament to the book because the ending is very, wow. Like it's very, very surprising. So, uh-huh. It's a four star read and I, I don't know is my whole synopsis about that book. And then I read Wilder Girls for my book club. And this was like a speculative sci-fi book it's on a remote island in Maine where there's like an all-girls boarding school and this boarding school is struck by the tox which is like a virus and I don't know if I'm still like ready for <laughs> like pandemic reads it just hit really close to home with what we've all been going through in the past like two and a half years there were a lot of loose ends and it, there's a lot of body horror but it wasn't like so distracting that it like took away from the plot or anything and the way the book ends isn't super great because it's very open-ended I was talking with my book club because this is what we read for my in real life book club and it's one of those books that I think would do really well as like a mini series on TV because you could flesh out and like show things a little bit more. It would be a really cool 
thing to see on screen and I just really liked it. So the tox like affects these girls and they're like under quarantine and they're not supposed to leave the school but the girls discover there's like something amiss like there's more to the story and you're just kind of unraveling that. It had a lot of great discussion for our book club which book club books I think are they need to be discussable or they're not a good book club book. So really liked it. Definitely would recommend if you're into like gothic, body horror, speculative fiction. Um, it's not like super scary, but it is creepy and eerie. And then I read Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard. And this was my first Katherine Ryan Howard. And I listened to a lot of podcasts before I read this book. And Katherine Ryan Howard has been on my list of authors to try. And she writes like crime, Irish crime fiction. And people that I really like, really like her. I'm glad I listened to the podcast before I read this book because ultimately what it came down to is this is the book like the author wanted to write. Maybe not the book that people wanted to read. So that helped me kind of like process this. So this book is about an actress who is sent out to like a remote place to film this horror movie. The horror movie is based on this script called like Final final cut I think. The script is about a girl reading a book in a remote cabin and the cat the book is eerily similar to what's happening to this girl as she's reading this script in the cabin which is then acted by Adele and Adele is reading the script that's about a book and all these things are happening to each person. I hope these hand movements are helping you because it's like a it's a book within a script within a movie. It was just cleverly done and so the book goes between Adele and then the movie script and the movie script was just really fun to read. It, it was a really fun experience and the first half of the book was super atmospheric, super creepy but then when it got to like the unraveling of the plot it was just very mundane, very predictable, um, very much kind of a letdown. If you like Riley Sager, I think you would have really liked this. And I do really like Riley Sager. And I did like this book. It just, the unraveling of what was happening was too simple, kind of predictable. And it stunk because the first half was so atmospheric. I thought if it had really embraced like the slasher horror novel, I would have really loved it. All of this to say though, that I will read more of her books. I've heard she's a fantastic author. She has a great backlist. So like, I'm definitely gonna keep reading her books. I just, this one was kind of about, you know, it just wasn't the best thing I've ever read, so. Okay, good morning. I am in a different place today. I'm actually working at my parents' house because for whatever reason, our street is without internet. We think another, the other internet company in our area cut our line. There's no ETA. So I have to work at my parents' house today. The um, next, I'm going to go through a few more books that I read in September. And the book that I think will probably be one of my favorites, actually two, I'm going to do or two of my favorites this month were The Bodyguard and then Love on the Brain. So for The Bodyguard by Catherine Center, I've pretty much decided I will read anything Catherine Center writes. She writes such great romance but she also just really fleshes out her characters and I have read I think the past three of her books they kind of are like Hallmark movie-ish like some of the scenarios that these people are put into are a little over the top especially I'm thinking of the plane crash one but this one is just cute so it's about a female bodyguard who works for like a private security firm and she is assigned to protect a like Brad Pitt level movie star. And he has some trauma from his past. She has some trauma. Um, and they kind of just come together. And it's funny. It's heartwarming. There's some parts that kind of make you a little sad. And there's like a family dynamic that's really precious. But I could not put it down. I inhaled it. And... I think I read it, I started it on a Saturday morning, like before everybody got up in the house and then I finished it during nap time. So just 10 out of 10 recommend it. Really, really fun read. If you're just looking for like a lighthearted, just book to kind of like cleanse your palate, I would say this is a really good one. The other one that I just adored was Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. I loved it like 10 times more than The Love Hypothesis. It follows B and Levi. Again, Levi is about as Adam Driver as you can imagine. 
B and him are like grad school acquaintances and he was a jerk to her in grad school. Um, spoiler alert, he loved her, which is why he was a jerk to her. And there's a lot of miscommunications throughout the past and the present. They get put together to work on this project at NASA. She works for a different government agency. And what I liked about it is like on top of the romance, there was a really cool like dynamic explaining how like federal agencies work and the funding and the politics um, that I thought was just very, very interesting. Some of the conflict at the end, like the plot conflict, not the relationship conflict, was a little over the top, but I liked the relationship conflict in that like it just was really well fleshed out. And even when they, they have their like typical as in all romance novels, there's like a conflict and it is kind of based on communication, but they love each other enough that they're like there for each other. And I just really liked that. There's an invisible cat in the book and it's hilarious. There's just some cute dynamics with like being vegan, which I'm not, but I just really liked that little like factoid. It was just a really, really cute book and I really, really liked it. Hello. It is another day of me working at home, so I'm going to keep going through some books that I've read this month, and I'm going to talk about the two audiobooks I've completed this month. I listened to Together We Burn, and I listened to I'm Glad My Mom Died, which, like, the whole book world has been listening to or reading by Jeanette McCurdy. So I just finished Jeanette McCurdy's book today, and it is phenomenal. I recommend listening to it on audio if you can because she narrates her own audiobook and I think she obviously she's an actress so like she's really good at it and I was just old enough that I Carly and a lot of those Nickelodeon shows I never got into so I'm an, more on the elder millennial spectrum than the younger ones so I never watched I Carly I really didn't know who she was but this, I've just heard such great things about this memoir. So I started listening to it. I like that it's short chapters. So like, it's a really easy audiobook to pick up and put down if you're like busy. Um, and I find memoirs just easy to listen to on audio because it's not something I get like totally absorbed in, but it like appends my entire life. So it's a really raw and real memoir about her life and the abuse she suffered at the hands of her mother as well as her like rise as a child actor, her struggles with eating disorders and alcoholism, and then also her her humor. Like she's just, she's funny. And I, I thought it was a really well done book because it was about really heavy, hard things. There's a lot of trigger warnings, but she managed to like balance that with some of her like wry sense of humor. And it was just so well done. I, five stars, like loved it so much. The other audiobook I listened to this month was Together We Burn by Elizabeth, Isabel Canis, I believe. Um, and this is about like, it's a mythical Spanish world, takes place in like a mythical Spain. And the main character is a flamenco dancer, but like in a dragon pit, her family like has this like dragon fighting ring, coliseum type thing business. And that's a thing. And they, people like wrangle dragons, uh, as like a safety maneuver and her family kind of like a whole bunch of people are like plotting against her family um, and there's a big like commotion and she has to kind of one unravel like what's happening with her family but also like save her family's business and it's kind of there's some romance in it lots of magic it was just really well done um, on audio it's really really good especially because there's a lot of Spanish in it and so it's just nice to listen to that on audio, but I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it like three and a half stars. It was just different. I think it's like new adult YA, that kind of range. Um, but I got it from Libro FM. Actually, I got both of these from Libro FM as review copies. Loved both of them. I've had a really great audio book month. I'm actually going to be starting my first like spoopy read of the season. And it's The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy, which I also got from Libro FM. They have a really nice influencer program. So thank you to Libro FM for providing that content for me this month. Hi again. So I finished a few more books through the end of the month. I finished a book down at the last minute for the month of September. I am going to share those two. I think we can all agree that Kindle Unlimited, good things never come from Kindle Unlimited, but like good things do come from Kindle Unlimited. So I was just like craving a fantasy romance 
and for whatever reason discovered the whole of the Zodiac Academy is on Kindle Unlimited. I downloaded the first one and I read it in like a day. And so then I, I'm now reading the second one. Um, I'm going to show you guys the cover here. I guess I can just do it right here. But anyway, so the Zodiac Academy is about two twin sisters who find out they're actually like the daughters of the lost, of the lost like fae king and queen. And they get whisked into this world and it's kind of like a school, kind of dark academia, but it's definitely more YA, but very romantic. And no, I wouldn't even say it's romantic. It's a bully romance. So know that going into it. But it was just fun. It was exactly what I needed. It's a series, so it'll be something I can sink my teeth into for a while, but it doesn't require a lot of brain thought, which is what I needed after my like crazy work week and just life. And then the book that I finished at the very last minute of September is Upgrade by Blake Crouch. And you know, I've read Dark Matter. I haven't read Recursion yet, although I have it right there. Right there. My husband read it and it's a book. Blake Crouch is an author. I can get my husband to read. My husband's not a huge reader, but I am starting to kind of figure out what he likes. So he likes like Blake Crouch and Andy Weir, and he really liked the Scythe series, but I think Neil Schusterman, which I haven't read those. So when he likes something, I want to read it with him. And he loved Dark Matter. He read Recursion and enjoyed it, and he read Upgrade. And I think we talked, and I think Upgrade was his least favorite of the three that he's read. And I haven't read Recursion but I would say this will probably be my least favorite of the three I've read. It was good. It's about a guy who becomes like genetically modified. And it just, I connected with the characters in Dark Matter a lot more and I cared more. This character, like because of the changes he goes through, I don't think you're really supposed to connect with him because he was so like scientific and very like fancy. And all of his DNA had been altered and I just... It was a fast read, like it really didn't take me a long time to read, but it was about three stars, pretty middle of the road. I finished it and I was just okay with it. Like I'm not disappointed in it by any means. I just, it was just very middle of the road. So all in all, I think I read 15, 14 or 15 books in September. That's a great reading month for me. Usually if I get like 10, I'm pretty happy. October is looking to be a really great reading month for me. I've got a lot of books I'm excited to read about, read and like, I'm very encouraged by that. So that's the wrap up and I will be getting this up tomorrow because I've just been a hot mess this month. And now we're on to October, which is the best month for reading in my opinion. Um, don't forget, if you like this video, please don't forget to comment and subscribe. Um, help me grow my channel. I really like to talk in the comments. So if there's a book that you really liked or hated or whatever, let me know in the comments and we can talk. Um, but again, until next video, thanks for stopping by.